Welcome to the Church of Anarchy, Baptist District, Family Forum. Trust you've had a wonderful day, and of course, this is our weekly program where we focus on family issues. And as we have said on several occasions, our motivation for this program is to help strengthen and reinforce the family life in our beautiful Barbados. We understand the family indeed is the core institution in our society. And in, in the light of many of the things that are happening, of surgery violence and so on, we believe that if we can address some basic family issues consistently, that we can indeed enrich our society. And uh, again, today we have with us our co-host, um, Reverend Kellen. Good evening. Good evening. All right. And uh, we are very pleased to have our special guest um, today, Dr. Dan Carter, educator. Dr. Carter, good evening to you. Thank you. All right. Um, Dr. Carter is a former primary school teacher. Um, also a principal and also a senior education officer in the Ministry of Education. An author of a number of books, of course, as well, um, including Empowering the Disabled and History of Early Childhood Education. That's two of the books he has written. As an educator of 40 plus years, I'm sure that he's well positioned to share with us today. And I, that, I, I'm sure that we'll benefit from his involvement. There's a verse in the Bible that I'm, I'm sure that we often use in Proverbs 22, 6. It says, train a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not turn from it. And oftentimes we will use it referring to maybe Christian education, but I'm sure that this is also relevant in the area of secular education as well. And uh, today I'm sure we want to explore the topic we're exploring is the impact of education on the stability and upward mobility, or you may want to say social mobility, of the family in Barbados. And uh, we want to explore this topic. I know that half hour is a short time, but um, I'm sure that Dr. Carter will zero in on some key areas. And uh, the, the program that follows this one next week will continue the same theme, looking at current situations in education and the way forward. But today, um, Dr. Carter is going to focus um, a historical perspective as it relates to Barbados in terms of education and how it has impacted the family. But um, Reverend Kelman will say a prayer for us at this time. Shall we pray? Father, we give you thanks today for your grace and for your goodness. And we thank Lord for our presenter, Dr. Carter. Pray God today that as he would share that it would be a time of reflection and recommitment to the process of education. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We're back with you in a minute. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum. Shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, it's good to be back with you for this very exciting evening's program. Like we said to you before, we have Dan Carter. He'll be the one that will share with us this evening. And so 
without any further discourse, I want to invite him to come and to share. Thank you. Um, I'm pleased to be here this morning to engage in the topic of uh, education and its crucial role in development of Barbadian family life. As you know, in the 18th century, um, during the slave period, uh, the Europeans came to the Caribbean and they brought with them their customs and their civilization. Mm -hmm. And part of that civilization was family life. On the other hand, um, when sugar became an important and critical um, industry in the Caribbean, um, Africans were brought over here. Mm -hmm. And unlike the Europeans, they were just shipped here. Um, they, whatever family life they had back in Africa was disrupted and they were spread across the plantations. Mm -hmm. And therefore, um, that created a tension within um, Barbian society because the whites had their family structure in place where the Africans did not. Fortunately, though, um, around the 1750s, following up the movement in England for the abolition of slavery, um, churches, the Methodists and the Moravians particularly, they were the first church missionaries that started to Christianize um, the slaves. And uh, they went through the plantations. And it was a struggle because um, the, your, the, the owners of the plantations felt that um, they were disrupting their profitability. Mm -hmm. In other words, um, they saw the Christian um, enslaved as a threat to themselves. Anyhow, to the admiration of the Moravians and the Methodists, they persisted mm -hmm. their Christianization of the enslaved. Later on, they were joined by the Anglicans. And uh, a critical institution in that development was the, the Sandy School. Mm. They used the Sandy School as a main agency for their educational. Um, in fact, the Sandy School itself at that time looked upon as their school. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, also, the Anglicans later they established on the Coleridge a series of chapel schools that were used as both um, churches and uh, schools. So one cannot ignore the role of the church in the development of a stable um, Barbadian society. And uh, when we say stable, we refer then to the family because they were able to insist upon the enslaved, the that right to live um, as um, f husband and wife, and uh, that was very important. Then, uh, after the 1850s, the government itself started a, a massive construction of schools, but between 1850 and 1900s, um, primary schools were built across Barbados. Um, in fact, by 1880 or so, Barbados had over 201 primary schools. So the primary school was easily accessible to Bar Barbados um, throughout the country. But then again, the schools play a important role too because of the curriculum in schools. The curriculum in the early stages was basically um, religious knowledge. Um, many of you my age and, old, and younger too will remember um, the primary school teaching the commandments, which we had to know from commandment one to 10. Then um, the passages in the Bible, the Proverbs, we had to learn some of those and all that. And that is still in, um, in the, the, the exiles and the, the general Barbadians after slavery, the moral, that moral ethic that determined that um, they should know what is right and wrong and that sort of thing. So the curriculum 
um, in the schools played a great a important role in the bringing us to who we are, um, persons who accept God. Um, in my day, if you if you pick an apple, you would think that you're off for God, but come on, people, know that. Um, but I suppose that um, uh, the later presenter might fall upon how we are now. <laughs> but um, the, the, the point I'm making is though that the church should lay the foundation for our important development as a people in Barbados. The, 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 the and then uh, not only that, but the parents immediately after slavery, the parents in Barbados, perhaps through the Caribbean, were consumed in, the, in getting their children away from the plantation life mm -hmm. and into schools. And I want to make that is a very important, um, important thing to remember that Barbadian parents uh, they were obsessed with the idea of their children going to school. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they, their children themselves carry on that tradition. And uh, by the 1940s, 50s, um, Barbados, uh, be, nearly all of the children were, were educated, at least at the primary level. Later on, um, we will see that the, we had full access at the secondary, but the primary was basic. And, and uh, I must admire that our Barbadian parents, even today, for this, this obsession in ensuring that the children get a good education. And uh, so that the Christian values uh, are coming out of the curriculum played an important role. And uh, the, the, the government themselves also erecting schools across the country. So I would say that um, the church played a, a very important role. And sometimes I wonder if there's any other country in Barbados that had that number of primary schools. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So thanks um, again for allowing me to make that sort of short presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank Great. you, Dr. Yes. Carter. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that we will let our appetite, <laughs> indeed our, our listeners. I, I think that it is important that when you think in terms of any sphere of activity, um, to have an idea of history in order to go forward. And you have given us uh, encapsulated part of our history as it relates to education mm -hmm. in, a, in, in, in short time. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we, we, we were, our appetites were indeed teased, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, if you were to one is of, of very significant note is the, the role that church should have played in terms of facilitating mm -hmm. um, education you know, in those early years and, and, and also um, the content of the curriculum, you know, with reference to <clears throat> um, scripture, um, moral guidance, yes, yes. you know, um, it, it seems as though the focus was not so much on, well, let me say it differently, the content was there, of course, um, but there was a, a strong element of, of value, of values yes. that were taught then. And I'm wondering, though, maybe if that's something you want to talk about a little bit, yeah, well, with reference to it, when we come back from, yes. from our break. Yeah. Well, in, in short, while we're back, listeners, and we want to pick up where we left off as we zero in on the emphasis on education, but, but a strong emphasis on the biblical perspective, impact, and value. But we'll give you a minute. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Back with you, listeners and viewers, of course. Well, um, Dr. Carter made some very important points um, as it relates to what the curriculum, what was involved in the curriculum. And primarily, he did talk about religious knowledge um, through the use of the Bible. And I, I remember myself 
of course, as a child, um, in that time, um, that, that with the 50s, 50s, in the primary school, 60s, um, almost every class had Dr. Carter a number of Bible. Of course. School, school Bible. School Bible. School Bible. You know, and um, enough that each child can get one. I remember that very well. Mm -hmm. What captured me then was the pictures, you know, they had an illustration right. as well. So in a way, it drew you to them to read. Right. To read the stories. Yes. And so on. I remember, can't you recall yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, 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 obviously, I'm not as well. Or some vintage. But, <laughs> but, but certainly, certainly, with a lot of experience as well. Yeah. But, but you know, I, I was thinking, though, that even um, like reading, mm -hmm. you read from the scriptures. That's right. So even though, even though you, learnt, you learnt to read, then you also learnt the, the, the word as well and, yeah. and, and the concepts yeah. uh, that, that, that were contained therein. Right. But, but I was listening very right to what um, um, Dr. Carter said about the Sunday school, mm -hmm. that it was, it was actually a school, school. right? Yeah. And that uh, many children learned to read and, and write in Sunday school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm wondering, though, maybe if perhaps in terms of um, Sunday school relevance now, I mean, we know that, that, that um, in most of our um, churches, I can speak to Nazarene, uh, we've had some children at our Sunday school mm -hmm. We part with some numbers, not no fault of anyone really, yeah. just to read the, the, the condition of the times, yeah. right? And I wonder maybe if the time has come for us to perhaps begin to reimagine mm -hmm. Sunday school in a yeah. way that, you know, we, we move from maybe just simply uh, a Sunday morning experience, yeah. perhaps uh, during the week where we do some of those things again, mm -hmm. because there's still some children who need to learn to, yeah. to read and to write and mm -hmm. stuff. And yeah. I use it in, in a more, in, a, in that kind of a way. I'm not sure what, what you think about I that. Think, I think what has been happening, persons perhaps would want to move away from calling it Sunday school. Some people call it education hour. Yes. But I think the relevance is important. Yes. Uh, and because it, it allows for age appropriate, yeah. age, age appropriate right. I mean, and, and, and education as, as well. As families, families become more, more, more uh, occupied in their own pursuit of, of, of you know, taking care of, of financial and of the family. Mm -hmm. um, we have single mothers you know, who are struggling. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking that maybe, you know, having our, our Sunday school hour, maybe on a Tuesday evening, you know, could be, could be I useful. Suppose, I suppose that's why you can call it education. It's just hour. hour. Because oh, okay. I mean, it's not, it's not on Sunday. We, we, we can rename it, yeah. right? We can rename it. Yeah. That's not a problem. But, I, think, I think the issue really has to do with, mm -hmm. with, with what we are trying to, to achieve. Yes, yes. And that, and I'm not sure if that kind of work. Yeah, yeah because it's kind of here, though. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The curriculum has shifted away a bit from yes. that sort of moralizing. Yes. Um, and that is a critical thing. Um, Are we afraid to, indo to, to indoctrinate? Yes, <laughs> because of the, 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 the large number of different denominations you have, yes. the Jehovah's Witness and, and those who have their own, their own um, philosophy and that sort of thing. Um, but still, there must be in education that moral theme. That, That's right. Uh, yes, if not, we yes. lose the whole focus of what education is, mm -hmm. you know. But sometimes we have the impression, people have to give the impression mm -hmm. that you can talk about values, mm -hmm. but there's no source from whence it came, as if oh, you can yes. dig deep within you. Mm -hmm. But yeah. truth in fact, in our, we, we are a Christian society, and the mm -hmm. Bible has been that source. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that we drew those mm -hmm. values from, as you have said, mm -hmm. and um, it, has, it has served us well. And I think perhaps, it, as you're saying, because of the number of different religions um, in our society, sometimes we try not to step on anybody's corns, if you want to say, and we tend to get to the point where we almost like abandon that, that perspective. Exactly. Well, probably though, I, I mean, I think though that also. Um, the, the element of the teacher as well, mm -hmm. yes. you know, who will teach these values. Yes. Because I mean, I'm sure you guys would agree um, that years ago the teacher was 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 very very carefully um, handpicked. I'm not saying she, she I'm Chosen. not saying you know, she's not not handpicked these days yeah. either. Yeah. Right. But I'm saying, I mean, and there were certain moral expectations. Mm -hmm. that, the society saw the teacher. Yes. As as Dr. Carter mm -hmm. said, but, we're but, a leader even but, outside the class. But more than that, though, mm -hmm. there, there were certain things that were that were enshrined yeah. in a teacher, you know, I, I'm told that she, uh, it was a female, mm -hmm. 
like she had to be to be married. Or, or, or there was there was also different little yeah and then go back yeah 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 go back yeah, 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 go ahead the, the, the <laughs> teachers in those days were the Sunday school teachers right you know and they held posts between the church itself right so that that, that uh, even a better link right link between the church and, and the school. school yeah right but nowadays uh, but the right of the teacher is but you can't deny that the teacher may not be a person who of, of, the of, of faith, of, yes. 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 You know what I mean? Yes. Right. So all that is sort of broken down. Right, right. That, that, that link, you know? Right. <laughs> and thanks for, for clarifying that for us because mm-hmm. that, that's what I was making. What I was yeah. making is that, is, that, is that maybe that, that also offers for us um, an opportunity yeah. as a church mm-hmm. um, to, to, to see how we can, how we can you know, uh, return to the schools um, as, an, as an institution, not just as an individual. Yeah. And 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 kind of have that that sort of impact because I agree with what both of you have said that education should have a moral component to it, you know, um, because you don't want to educate a man, a woman, and they don't have any kind of moral grounding. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're creating that, basically someone who can do do some nice harm. Exactly. So anyway, there has to be some moral grounding, yeah. and and maybe maybe I think how we reimagine. Um, teaching as 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 a, as a church may involve looking at that as well. Yes. I just took back again the history um, mm-hmm. the, the, because of the, the teachers being courses and that sort of thing. Many of the school children too were came up in choir. You know, they, yes. They to join the choir. And yes. All yes. So, so all, in the early days, then, so that link is yeah, that link was always there. Yes. You know? yes. <laughs> and today, really. Not, not there. Not there. Yeah. should be, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, I think earlier, I think another point that would have been mentioned, the whole idea, I like the, the, um, the motivation, you talk about the motivation, uh, you use the word upset, uh, 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 parents were almost upset with making sure their children mm-hmm. were well educated. You want, you want to expand that a little bit? Yes. What, 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 what caused the obsession, what do you think? Because basically, the parents do not want their children to um, experience that plantation life. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, and the, the, the school was the, was the option. It was the way out. Yes. In order for Ali and and, and Dr. Carter, I, I must say to you that I, I was a product of that same kind of philosophy. My mom would always say to us, she worked in agriculture, and she always say to us, you know, um, don't come here. Yes. You know. Um, so that drove them. Yeah, during the day I would I would um occasionally like, like, during the, the, the Easter break and and the summer break. Easter break in particular, I would take Moby and, and fish cakes for her during during the during the day. Yeah. Right. And she would always say, um, um, leave, leave quickly, don't stay here. Right? <laughs> yeah, because okay. because yeah. of the insistence that yeah. I wanted you to become educated mm-hmm. and get a different sort of, of job. Now that's that that was very useful at that time though. Yeah. Um, but I must confess that there's still um, great jobs in agriculture, yeah, though. At a different, at a different level, yeah, though. Yeah. Right? So I yes. You understand their motivation. <laughs> yes, right? yes. So they still understood the hazard of slavery. And yes. So on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they, long hours, hard work, yes. yeah. course. I mean, yeah. little pay, and also it's yeah. quite understandable. So, so they would have. They were, they were very ardent, uh, devoted workers, but they just sought to make sure their children were educated. Yes. And um, as you said. We benefited from that. And I remember when, 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 when it was working, um, I would see mom coming home black yeah. with all the, all the, all the suit and stuff yeah. from the kids. So I fully understood the point yeah. that she was making. Yeah. 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 But Dr. Carter, I know we, we kind of going so quickly. Any other point you want to mention? Because I think oh, some, another point that came also the whole idea of um, the white, those widespread poverty. But yeah. That didn't stop them. It's the same point you made just now. Poverty, yes, but that didn't stop them from educating their children. Yeah, the, the vision was always there. Yes. So especially um, when we look at the Michigan report of 1878, um, that separated the primary from the secondary, but it did one important thing. It offered scholarships for the primary school child to gain entry into the secondary school. Mm-hmm. And that was a major, major input into our um, educational mm-hmm. development. Mm-hmm. So that the 
the ordinary child in the primary school, the ordinary black child, could gain a scholarship at the primary level into uh, Harrison College, the first and second grades. And uh, if that child was particularly gifted in academic, go on to university. Mm -hmm. So Barbados, very early, had that pathway from primary to secondary. Mm -hmm. And the parents then, you know, that would have, especially going on to secondary school, late in the, late, um, the early 19th century, the passion to Barbados parents to get their children into, if not the older grammar schools, um, the first grade, the second grade, and the expansion of private schools. Yeah. And that desire to, to, that's for the combination, and this is probably later, the later person, but <laughs> the combination was that, is such a motivating force. Yeah. 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 And even if the child isn't, um, doesn't even say about in terms too bright, it's so driven to go to Harrison College, yeah. you yeah. see? Yeah. And that's a passion that Barbadian parents yeah. had. Um, from that early time up to now. Even, even now, mm -hmm. even now, I mean, even now there's still that element of, of desire to, to do well. I mean, I mean, of course, there'll be pockets of uh, persons who don't have that, that, that strong motivation, mm -hmm. but certainly uh, there's that desire. But I want to make the point, though, in terms of stability, you know, um, and, and I, I believe um, firmly that a part of our stability as a, as a people and as families you know, um, you know, as a result of, of that educational push, right? So persons understood the ability to uh, how to write, how to read, uh, how to how to engage, how to argue, you know, and, and so they resorted to the to the violence mm -hmm. and was not as as is in other places. Yeah. All right. Um, so so yes, yeah, certainly yes. Yeah, I suppose sometimes you know we when we when we talk about resources that are available to families and how those resources will help families. To towards about mobility. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't think of education, but education is a resource. Mm -hmm. It is a resource, mm -hmm. um, a resource that can empower families. Mm -hmm. um, you may not have a lot of money, but I mean, if you are able to secure um, a strong education, it can lead to the point where you can 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 in terms of social mobility. Forward. Yeah, I look forward to our next conversation though. Yeah. Um, because what's happening now? What's happening now? Yeah. Because um, <laughs> but uh, the history yes, is relevant. It, I mean, the time is not it's, so it's quickly, right clear. Yes. I am. Um, the character we can give the chance to be able to close their comment because half hour is not so quickly. Um, so you want to leave with us as we close? Yes, I'm happy that your church is focusing in this direction um, because the what is happening today, you can see that in the Education, education is being not fully um, appreciated because of this lack of, of moral grounding. Um, mm -hmm. The when you hear, um, you can see a boy appearing at court being his grandmother. You know, you, you start to you want to know just what is happening. You know, um, in my day. I, I see the elder people, I respect them, yeah. that thing with respect and all that. Yeah. So um, I must applaud you all for moving this direction and glad for the opportunity to have put some of my views on the table. We very much appreciate that. Now, mm. Listeners, as we always say, that this, these are discussion starters that we hope that you can explore in your own church, in your own family, and uh, as we reflect on the history. Um, the history, understanding the history gives us a platform to move forward and improve ourselves. Um, Reverend Calvin, the closing prayer. Thank you very much. Almighty God, we thank you for the thoughts that were distilled this evening in this discussion. We, we pray, God, that they will be used to uh, further understanding our reality as we look at our history. And that Father will be able, oh God, to make moves and, 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 and initiatives uh, to, to ensure, Father, that the church has a, a greater role in terms of the family and the school. We give you thanks even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dr. Carter, once again, thank you so much. Welcome. Yeah. Appreciate your presence. Thank, thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs>